Hello, you're watching Eye on Africa with me, Yenna Lee. Your headlines on the continent tonight. Libya's rival governments both release statements calling for a ceasefire. The United Nations and Egypt's PC, among others, welcome the move. Thousands of Malians rally in support of the ouster of President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. Meanwhile, the West African bloc ECOWAS prepares to send a delegation to Bamako. And a Nollywood film goes online to avoid censorship. Makers of Ife say they fear the lesbian love story could be banned. But first, signs of a ceasefire in Libya. Fayez al-Sarraj's internationally recognized government and the head of East Libya's parliament both released statements calling for a ceasefire today. This has prompted a cautious optimism from observers. The UN, the EU and Egypt all welcoming the latest developments. Libya has been locked in a civil war since 2014. Previous attempts at ceasefires have stalled. Selena Sykes and Yuka Roya report. It's a move that could herald a new era for Libya. In separate statements, President Fayez al-Sarraj, the head of the UN-recognized Tripoli government, and Aguila Saleh, the speaker of the eastern base parliament allied with military strongman Khalifa Haftar, declared an immediate ceasefire throughout the country. The UN mission in Libya said the announcements demonstrated the courage which Libya was in urgent need and called on all parties to rise to the historic occasion. The two sides have been at war virtually since the formation of al-Sarraj's government of national unity in December 2015. Haftar's forces expanded their territories in the east and the south and mounted a fierce offensive to capture the capital Tripoli. But they had to retreat in June of this year after Turkey intervened militarily to help the unity government. In July, the Parliament of Egypt, a long-time backer of Haftar's eastern forces, approved troop deployments around the last remaining battleground Sirt, raising fears of a full-blown proxy war between Cairo and Ankara. In a tweet, Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi called the ceasefire an important step on the road towards achieving a political settlement and the aspirations of the Libyan people to restore stability and prosperity in their country. The two sides have also agreed to hold elections in the near future. The situation remains precarious around Sirte, a major gateway to Libya's oil facilities. While al-Sarraj has called for the creation of demilitarized zones around the coastal city, Saleh proposed the installation of a new government there. Now, uh, in Mali, the opposition coalition has organized protests in support of Tuesday's coup. Thousands of people took to the streets in Bamako. This summer, there had been uh, mass demonstrations calling for the removal of President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. Since his ouster, some of IBK's critics have quickly embraced the mutineers. Ellen Gainsford has the details. Demonstrations continue in the streets of Bamako. Days after the overthrow of President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita by the military. After calling for him to be ousted, opposition supporters are overjoyed. But the coup has been viewed less favorably outside of Mali. ECOWAS, the Economic Community of West African States, are sending a delegation to the country this Saturday. Its stated aim is to ensure the immediate return of constitutional order. But it's not likely to receive a warm welcome. The military maintains President IBK resigned willingly. And the opposition party, M5 RFP, says ECOWAS won't influence their position. The debate between the heads of the state has taken place. You already know the results. They want to come. They want to come. They will come. But we will not change. Now, the military of the military junta says it's seeking a transitional president to return the country to civilian rule, but refuses to give a set time frame. You know, it's very, very difficult at this stage to say when the transition will last. The objective is to finish the transition, to organize the elections general, but we hope that it will be the most brief possible. It's not clear whether the main opposition party will be involved in this planned transition. While the M5 RFP led protests against the president, they didn't take part in his overthrow. 
But many of their supporters are angry at what they see as his failure to stem the jihadist insurgency, revive the economy and tackle corruption. Staying in Mali, the Red Cross says it's been in touch with abducted opposition leader Sumaila Sisse. It's the first time anyone has directly heard from him since he was kidnapped by suspected jihadists in March. The aid group says it's passed on personal letters written by him to his family, adding that as a humanitarian organisation, it's not involved in negotiating the 70-year-old's release. Turning our attention next to the Ivory Coast, small-scale anti alassane Ouattara protests took place despite a ban. Tensions running high there before October's presidential election. For the first time in the country, candidates need to pass a popularity threshold in order to stand. Presidential hopefuls need signatures from 1% of the electorate in at least 17 of the country's 31 regions. Organisers say uh, this will help weed out unrealistic contenders. Smaller parties, though, cry foul. Our correspondents at Sam Bradpiece and Thais Brook report. The road to the election is long for these activists. They stop everyone in their path trying to gather support for Mamadou Koulibaly, head of the opposition leader party. Bonjour, madame. Oui, Comment vous allez? Oui, ça va. Très bien. Écoutez, je viens vers vous aujourd'hui pour vous parler du parrainage citoyen. Est-ce que vous savez ce que c'est? Bon, le parrainage, je ne maîtrise pas trop le français. Monsieur? Political parties now need to convince at least 1% of voters in half of the country's regions to sign a document in support of their presidential candidate if they are to stand. But with a lack of resources, gathering the 60,000 signatures required is tough for smaller parties. By chance, this voter knew the ex-president of the National Assembly. Many believe that this new system is designed to favour the three main parties, the RHDP, the PDCI and the FPI. This operation, in plus d'être inconstitutionnelle, is anti-democratic because que... Euh, déjà, nous avons euh, le secret du vote qui est euh, presque quasiment dévoilé, euh, puisque nous allons vers les personnes, nous leur demandons clairement de, de, de spécifier leur, euh, leur opinion politique. Other parties say their campaigners have been harassed by ruling party activists while trying to gather signatures. Ils empêchent cette opération, ils empêchent cette action. C'est un combat vraiment au quotidien pour pouvoir avoir ne serait-ce que la signature de nos frais ivoiriens vivant au nord. The ruling RHDP party denies the allegations. S'ils n'y ont pas de militants, mais qu'ils cherchent à en avoir là-bas, plutôt que de venir mentir aux gens et aux autres comme quoi on les empêche de faire leur parrainage. Nous, nous sommes en train de faire notre parrainage partout. The candidates have until the end of the month to gather all the signatures necessary. Doctors in the majority of public hospitals in Kenya are on strike. They're angry at delayed salaries, a lack of medical insurance and inadequate PPE. That's the personal protective equipment that is crucial to take care of COVID-19 patients. PPE is also at the centre of attention in anti-corruption protests in Nairobi today. Police used tear gas to disperse dozens of peaceful protesters. Millions of dollars worth of medical supplies have allegedly gone missing, prompting outrage both online and on the streets. Take a listen to one activist who was at the protest. The Kenyan government knows the thieves and it is time they must arrest these thieves. We do not want to die in our hospitals. Hospitals are run by money and if this money is being stolen, we will not have hospitals. It is time we stand as Kenyans, it is time we stand as youths, it is time we stand as human rights defenders to defend this country. And finally, uh, Ife means love in Yoruba. Yoruba is widely spoken in Western Nigeria and parts of Benin. It's also the title of a new film set to be released online by Pamela Ardi. The prominent producer and LGBT activist's latest feature is about forbidden love between two women. More Julien reports. She wanted to know what that meant. Ife is the story of two Nigerian women who fall in love over the course of a three-day date and have to deal with stigma and family rejection. The team behind the film wanted to offer a glimpse into the everyday lives of people in same-sex relationships in Nigeria. I feel like for a very long time we've been told one-sided stories. And a story is not complete if it does not represent 
all the groups in the society. So what I wanted to do was to tell the full story by representing LGBT people in Nigeria. In a religious country where homosexuality is punishable by up to 14 years in prison, many consider it a corrupting Western import. I understand where they're coming from in that in Nigeria it's not accepted. And so doing something like that puts you away from, like it's, it's, not, it's not the norm. But, but, but I don't feel that it's bold. I feel that it's ordinary. I feel that it's my day-to-day -day life just being shown on screen. Nobody has been convicted so far under the law banning same-sex relationships, which came into effect in 2014. But the case of 47 men charged with public displays of affection is being closely watched. Ife will be released online to avoid any possible moves to ban it. The census board is really um, playing a big part in stopping these kinds of stories from coming to the uh, big screen, coming to the fore. And it's just really stifling creativity because the role of film is not to, to say this is right or this is wrong or anything like that. I think that the role of film and as a filmmaker is to portray reality as it is. Ife will be the first Nigerian film ever to portray a female same-sex relationship in a positive light. Thank you uh, for watching Eye in Africa. Stay tuned for more news and shows coming up right here on France 24.